Hey guys, we are headed off to the gym. I'm gonna do a complete lower body day today, hitting quads, glutes, and hamstrings. I don't usually deadlift and squat together in, in a single workout um, anymore. I used to when I was more into like power building, but not so much anymore. But today, since this is will be my only leg day this week, I'm gonna do them together, and then we'll see what other machines and equipment is open, just because it's a new year, and I know it's gonna be busier. Of course, always don't forget, you can screenshot the workout diagrams I included. I included, well, I'll probably put them right after this. And then, um, and also at the very end of the workout, so you can easily take this workout with you to the gym. And then I'll also have the full written workout in the description as well and the pinned comment. All right. I won't go into the full details of my leg day warm up, but if you want the play by play, I leave my leg day warm up video linked in the description. This workout is perfect for those of you who are more intermediate to advanced gym goers and will focus more so on strength and weight training. Of course, keeping in mind that strength and progress is gained over time and not just a single workout. Cheers to a good workout, guys. Let's get it. First step, not filmed just because it was too busy, but I'm going to warm up for conventional deadlifts with two sets of 10 to 12 reps with just a barbell. I typically recommend doing at least two warm-up sets of your compound movement if you're lifting heavier, one set with about 50% of the weight you'll be using for your working sets, and then the second with about 75% of the weight you'll be using for your working sets. For conventional deadlifts, I'll be doing four working sets of four reps. My recommendation would be to perform them at two RIR, but if you're not completely comfortable with deadlifts yet, then I'd recommend shooting for eight to 10 reps at any weight that you're comfortable with. My first set of deadlifts here is looking a little ugly, but I feel like my first one always does, and then I get better with each working set. Anyways, your feet should be positioned right inside your shoulders so that you can hold your arms straight down by your sides to grab the barbell with your legs comfortably inside of them. I like to use a reverse grip with one hand overhand and the other underhand. Depress your shoulders, retract your back muscles, and contract your core with each rep to help keep your spine in a neutral position and minimize injury to your back. Make sure to lean back slightly as you depress your shoulders and retract your lats before each rep so that your chest isn't facing straight towards the ground but instead slightly upwards. However, you don't need to be sitting parallel to the ground either. The exact degree of your upper body position as you get into the deadlift will ultimately depend on your body. Allow the contraction of your glutes and lower body to power the movement and avoid simply standing up to perform the exercise. As you reach lockout, simply go as far as the contraction of your glutes will take you. No need to lean your upper body back in order to lock out. Avoid lifting the weight up with your arms and shrugging your shoulders up to your ears. Full deadlift tutorial video linked in the description. Rest for 2-3 to three minutes between each set. Moving on, I'm going to do leg presses for 4 sets of 8 reps at 1 RIR. Literally by the 8th rep, I want to be able to do only 1 more rep and nothing more than that. If you feel like you could easily push out 3 or more reps, increase the weight as long as it doesn't compromise your form and you feel safe doing so. Allow the weight to rest on your feet and power the movement by driving your heels through the platform. Use as full of a range of motion as you comfortably can and get those knees as close to your chest as possible without excessively rounding your lower back. It's amazing how simply using a larger range of motion can make an exercise that much more difficult. Rest for 2-3 to three minutes between each set. Next up, I'm going to head over to the reverse hack squat machine for 4 sets of 8 reps at 1 RIR. Since reverse hack squats slant your feet downwards, they place a greater focus on the quads and also allow for a greater range of motion that you would not be able to get with back squats, which is especially helpful if you have longer femurs like myself. Keep your spine neutral at all times and core tight. If you've never done these before, it may feel as though you're squatting so low you're going into an endless abyss, but fear not, there is an end to every squat and you want to make sure you take full advantage of that extra extra range of motion that reverse hack squats gives you as it truly does make a regular squat much more challenging. Of course, making sure to avoid rounding the lower back as you hit the lowest point of the squat. Rest for 2-3 to three minutes between each set. Lastly, we'll do some glute drivers for 4 sets of 8 reps at 2 RIR. Keep your chin tucked down towards your chest as you normally would for hip thrusts to help keep your spine neutral. As you hit the lowest point of the rep, contract your glutes to push your hips up towards the ceiling, only going as far as the contraction of your glutes will take you. Avoid simply thrusting your body upwards and instead allow the contraction of your glutes to power the movement. I find that I feel it in my glutes most when my feet are positioned slightly more forward so my knees come to about 135 degrees right between 90 and 180 but play around with different foot positionings to see where you feel it in your glutes most. Rest for 1-2 to two minutes between each set. Alright guys we're back from the gym even though I know we only did four, I did end the workout with um, 30 minutes on the treadmill at a 10 to 15% incline, um, which I did film because literally like every, almost every single treadmill was taken. And for me, I just don't like to 
be in people's personal spaces with my camera. So if you want to do that, you can definitely do that. But if you don't want to, you don't have to. You can do any kind of other cardio you want to or just completely skip the cardio. If you are no cardio kind of girl, I feel you, okay? But yeah, so we're back home now. Um, I have my protein shake ready to go. It's a double scoop protein shake. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. I know that today's workout was only for exercises. I feel like if you're doing the exercises and the workouts and you're not really like, they're, they don't feel challenging to you, you need to probably um, increase the weights. And so that's why I usually put in like, you know, the RIR for you guys. So you guys have a good idea of like how heavy you guys should be lifting. And you guys will always hear me say there's no right or wrong amount of weight to use. Literally, like it's gonna be so personalized to you and where you're at and your body. And sometimes people are just naturally really strong at some exercises or just naturally have a strong upper body or naturally strong lower body. Cause you're probably so much stronger than you think, which is a great thing. Don't be afraid to challenge yourself up those weights and don't underestimate a very seemingly simple workout like this if you're using the correct amount of weights with good form using a full range of motion etc this is going to be a great just sorry <laughs> okay hold on <laughs> just a pause oh, for still, a second still crunch this workout out in no time well, not no time. It took me about an hour to get through uh, with warm ups and etc. But yeah, so, anyways, I hope you guys enjoy this workout. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and a great rest of your week. I will see and talk to you guys soon. Love you guys. Bye.